Welcome to the Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel. I'm Mark Gillespie. This is the place where regular whiskey lovers, just like you, nose and rate whiskeys from around the world. Each month we gather a panel of whiskey lovers, open up a few bottles, and turn them loose to share their opinions. This month our panel will be tasting three single malt scotches. The Oban 14-year-old, the Glenbergie 15 year old from the Ballantines Single Malt Collection, and the Highland Park Full Volume, along with a special bonus dram at the end. Later on, I'll tell you how you can join one of our tasting panels for an upcoming episode. But it's time to turn things over to this month's panelists. We'll meet them and start the tasting in just a minute. Support for the Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel comes from The Whiskey Exchange, one of the world's leading whiskey retailers, offering worldwide delivery with a range of more than 9,000 whiskeys and spirits. The Singh Brothers, Sikinder and Raj, opened the Whiskey Exchange in 1999 with a simple philosophy to offer the best whiskeys at competitive prices. You'll find everything from Amrut to Yamazaki on their website including every single malt you can think of, and plenty that you might not have, including their own single cask bottlings, like the new Art of Whiskey Collection series, and distillery exclusive bottlings from around the world. Voted 2017 Independent Spirits Retailer of the Year at the recent IWSC Awards, the Whiskey Exchange is, as the Huff Post put it, Scotch Whiskey's Cathedral. If you're visiting London, stop by their shop in Covent Garden or visit them online at The Whiskey Exchange and you'll find them on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram too. Once again, support for the Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel comes from The Whiskey Exchange. So let's meet our tasting panel for this episode of The Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel. We are at uh, Whiskey Cast Central in Studio B also known as the dining room, because we have a table big enough to uh, put some folks around. And uh, let's start off working left to right around the table right now, the rookie on our tasting panel this month, Sam Spears. Uh, Sam, welcome, and uh, tell us about yourself and how you got into whiskeys. I came by it honestly by uh, tailing along with my father and one of his 'er ne'er-do-well buddies, and uh, my father told me, Sammy, go make me another one of these. And I poured him one of them, and I smelled it, and I said, that smells delicious. And his ne'er-do-well buddy said, drink it. And I said, okay. And my father said, no, your mother will kill me. And that was my start of my enjoyment of scotch. I won't ask how old you were at the time, because that would be uh, <laughs> I was markedly a underage. bad example. <laughs> and, of course, we do preach responsibility. <laughs> We try to preach responsibility uh, was, around well, here. Well, I was but. I was very responsible. I just uh, I didn't dive into it in the deep end. In those, uh, it was I it was I was a teenager, but I did not dive into it. In the last few years, um, actually, a friend at work was gifted a bottle of Balvenie Doublewood, the twelve year old version, and he had no interest in it. He knew I had an interest in scotch and single malts, and he said, hey, you want this? And I said, sure. I had never heard of it. I tried it, and I really liked it. And then I uh, simultaneously was, uh, maybe that's not the right word, but around the same time I had gotten into uh, Twitter, and I had discovered the whiskey fabric. So I um, started talking to people on social media, and... um, discovered there's a whole lot more out there about scotch that I didn't know and just started trying more things, and I really enjoy it. Great. Welcome, and thanks for uh, joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Going around the table now, Mike Farley and then Angelo Veneziano, the uh, infamous members of the Barthenon in uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and the guys from the uh, It's Just the Booze Dancing blog. Guys, welcome back. Mike, uh, tell me what you've been tasting lately that uh, you were impressed by. Uh, just about everything. Uh, we had a tasting with Raj not that long ago, and I picked up some of the Black Adder, the Black Snake. That was very good. And we're talking Raj Black, Saberwall. Raj, and uh, the Black Snake, that was good. Good enough that I I may be getting that from Santa this year. <laughs> and a bottle of the Lady of the Glen, also very good. 
Very good. Trying to get some of the stuff that you can't usually buy somewhere else. So when you find a, a source that can get you something different, why not go for that? Angelo, what have you been drinking that you liked? Uh, I've, the most recent bottle I opened up was a bottle of the 2016 Car Chase of Lafroig. I know Mike had had a bottle before we finished it off. He was kind enough to gift me a bottle last year. Now, after working through a single malt whiskey society bottling of Lafroig, I worked on the Car Chase. So I've been kind of in a smoky mood. Okay. Well, let's uh, start off. We're going to do single malts this month, and we're going to start with the Oban 14-year-old. And, uh, guys, it's the glass on your left. You know the drill. Go ahead and get your noses in there, and I'll explain the uh, scoring procedure we use on the Whiskey Cast tasting panel. Each judge will uh, rate the whiskey from 0 to 5, that's a combined score with water and without water. They'll nose and taste it neat, then add water to taste, and we'll see what it does and how well it swims, and then go on from there. The guys can talk about the whiskeys, but not disclose their scores to avoid any kind of uh, peer impact. And then at the end, we will uh, tally up the scores, come up with a median for each one, and declare a winner for this month on the Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel. So, guys, what are we getting on the nose from this one? It's kind of lightly fruity. I'm getting maybe some green apple so far. A lot of candied sugar. Maybe a little toffee, a little caramel maybe. Of course, Oban is one of those coastal malts. So, uh, Sam? Yeah, I would say uh, I get the sweetness on it. Um, a little fruity. What kind of fruit? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I don't. Uh, my nose. I would not rate my nose very highly. I have a lot more confidence in my palate. My nose got busted years ago. And it just ain't right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure you deserved it. No, it was. Th that's a very interesting story, but I did not deserve it, and it wasn't a fight. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and taste it then. It's got a good bit of heat at the start, a little peppery, definitely sweet, and you get a little bit more of that fruit again. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of that, like the, the it's a good solid mouthfeel to it. It's it's mm. certainly not a thin whiskey, and you know you're getting a little bit more, maybe a little bit of leather and maybe a little bit of salt in the flavors. So you know maybe you're getting a little bit of the coastal coming through, salty yeah. caramel. Yeah. As, as That's I, good. As I move it around in my mouth. I just get uh, I, maybe it's a bit of astringency, you know. It just it, it tightens up in the mouth feel a little bit. I like okay. that. And like I said, it's got uh, a little oily, maybe when it first <laughs> hits, and then it moves into that other feeling that I get on the mouth feel on the palate. There's like a little that. little brine coming in at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit of yeah. that salt. A little yeah. tightness. Yeah. There. It's good. Yeah. And it's the, it's that kind of astringent without being medicinal. It's not like a yes. pudding. Like it's not a rubbing alcohol. It's more <laughs> like a nice savoring alcohol. Yeah, maybe alcohol. astringent's not that's the nice. Right, no, I, I, think, I think it is. It's drying. Dry. It's that yeah, astringent. That's, that's what that's what that but means. I, I, yeah. It's, it's yeah. not medicinal. It's yes. not like, yeah. uh, for instance, a Lafroy. No, no, yeah. no, not at all. No. Well, let's go ahead and add a little bit of water. And uh, there are pictures nice. there. And feel free to uh, go ahead and. Uh, Add water to taste. So we are quiet. we are so passing so around so the quiet. pipette. <laughs> dead air. We hate dead air, but with the, we can with, always with the uh, with the water. I think you get a little bit more of the fruit aroma comes through. Okay, it cuts down on maybe a little bit of the sugar. Maybe a little bit more of the fruit comes in, like apples, pears, something like that. Maybe definitely. You know, I've heard the term thrown around, so sometimes I hate to use it, but it, it opens it up. It, it's 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 just not quite as powerful when it hits your nose, but not in a bad way. It takes a little of the edge off. Yeah, yeah. a little bit, of, I, a little I, I more like of that the edge, though. salt or whatever you want to call it comes through like a salted caramel. It seems to open up a little bit more in the nose. A little bit of brininess. Yeah. Okay. We'll go ahead and taste. Yeah, it tones down that pepperiness that yeah. I got before. 
and it also brings out a little more, I guess a little more, like you said, brininess. It's like a little salty at the very end mm -hmm. with that caramel coming through. I think it loses a little bit of the heat up front, but it has yes. maybe a little bit more heat on the back end. The finish seems a little bit longer when you add mm. a little bit of water in it. It's nice. Does this hold up well, do nice. you think, with the water? Yes. Oh, yes. I think so. Oh, with a little bit of water, sure. Yeah. Yes. This I is one of my so. favorite uh, so. whiskeys to sip on the beach, and I have been known to sip a whiskey or two on the beach. A coastal whiskey on the beach? It seems appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Won't ask which beach, because some of the beaches in New Jersey are dry beaches. They frown upon that. Yeah. But what they don't know. Won't hurt them. And no, it's always easier you. to ask forgiveness than permission. I love you, Surf City. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead and write down your scores, guys, for the Oban 14-year-old. Zero to five. Zero to five. Zero to five. With half points are okay. We will move on. The next whiskey is one of these that, while we've tried to do accessible whiskeys all along on the tasting panel, this one is a little less accessible, at least in the U.S. It's not available here. This is the Ballantine's Single Malt Series from Glenbergie Distillery, 15 years old. A uh, space cider matured in American Oak X bourbon casks. It's 40% ABV. And this is part of a uh, new series that Chivas Brothers released this year in the fall with uh, several distilleries. I believe Milton Duff is one, and I think Glenn Talkers is the third. Uh, I will correct that if I'm wrong in the show notes for this episode, but they've released three of them so far from distilleries that uh, normally are not bottled as single malts that are part of the Chivas Brothers family, but that are uh, make a serious contribution to the Ballantine's blends. And the Glen Bergie is the 15-year-old uh, in this one. And uh, I thought it would be interesting just to pull this one out because it's one that's not widely available, and I thought uh, you guys had not had a chance to try it yet. Where are the distilleries? Where's uh, Glen Talkers and the, other, and the other one? Um, I believe these are all Speyside and Highland. Okay. But um, this one is a Speycider. And uh, let's uh, see what you think. Well, the color is much darker than the other one. It yeah, has yeah. That's, the, that's the bourbony look to it, I guess, right? Yeah. And I do not know if these have caramel in them or not. I'm looking at a UK bottle. It does not have the uh, Mittfarbstoff uh, labeling that one would expect to see in Germany if it had caramel in it. So I can't tell you that much, but it, it would not surprise me. But then huh. again, you never know. It's very pleasant. You know, the nose is very nice. I like it that has a like lot. a like a graininess to it mm. at, at the beginning, like cereal grains kind of smell, almost like a like a box like a box of Cheerios. Okay, like a maltiness, like oats. Yeah, or I'm something getting that. Like I'm getting that or like a, I don't get the oats. I get I get the malt more. Yeah, than like mm. oats, like a barley sugar type yeah. malt or a yeah, barley. Some, yeah, something, something like that. that. Yeah, it has what I call a round smell to it. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, but. When I smell something, sometimes I get something like that. It smells round to me. Sometimes I smell colors, too. Like some, some stuff smells green. This stuff smells round. Okay. It's, that's my mental dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, everybody it's, has their own unique way of describing yeah, smells. If you, if you want to put it into colors, if you want to put it into shapes, go for it. Is that, is that a holdover from the early 70s? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. I ask you not to talk about that. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, the statute of limitations has not expired uh, on some of that stuff uh, yet. <laughs> hey, they already know everything they need to know about me. Due to my uh, nature, the nature of my employment, I've had to answer all sorts of questions that were rather uncomfortable to answer. <laughs> we should explain that uh, Sam works for a fairly large uh, defense contractor based in southern New Jersey. We will not yeah. go into any more yeah. specifics than that because <laughs> if he told us, he'd have to kill us. <laughs> But uh, as a result, there are certain uh, security clearances yes, and inspections yes. that one must go through yes. for those kinds of jobs. And the best thing to be is honest, because they already know the answers. <laughs> yeah. Same thing when going through customs. Yeah. Uh, I come back through customs a lot when I'm traveling over to Scotland and when, even when I'm up in Canada. Uh, I always just declare everything. Don't try to sneak any whiskeys through because not only will you lose it, but they'll flag your passport, and then you'll get strip searched every time you come Ooh, through no at that fun. point. And I have an aversion to rubber glove searches. 
I actually kind of enjoy that. I, I ask for that instead of the x-ray. I don't know why. I heard that about I'm a little you. bit lonely. Yeah, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for sharing, Mike. T-M-I. Well, remember, you drew the line in the sand. He stepped over it. Yes, I know. I didn't see the line. I'm sorry. Oh, come on. You never met a line you didn't want to cross. Let's see what this one tastes like, guys, now that you've nosed it. It's a good thing you have a sheepdog to keep herding us. Yeah. I think it's a little bit softer than the than the Oban. Uh, the alcohol content obviously is a little bit lower, so so I think that is evident. It's uh it's not as thick. Yeah, as it's the Oban. almost a little. It's it's very pleasant. It's yeah. a good mm-hmm. it's a good sipping whiskey, but it, it doesn't seem to have the complexity of the last. One. But it's a lower viscosity than the other mm-hmm. one because mm-hmm. it doesn't really coat your mouth yeah. like the other one did. Very smooth. It is. Just from my basic experience in tasting it a couple of times, is a very easy drinker. Yes, this yeah. is a good session yes. whiskey, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah nothing, nice. nothing complex, but it, nothing offensive. It's it's very nice. One could kill a bottle of this mm-hmm. very easily, very think, easily in a night with some friends. It kind of falls into like that Balvenie Twelve. Yeah, the 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 double wood yes. category. Where what would we like to call the table whiskey? Yes, it's a table whiskey. Right, like they call the that house whiskey. They have a table whiskey in Kentucky. <laughs> table whiskey. <laughs> Lou Bryson called that a uh, house whiskey in his uh, book, tasting, tasting Whiskey. Yeah, it's not super peppery. Again, I get that, you know, that maltiness to it. It's a little bit of fruit. Is there any sherry on this? No, it's all American oak. Oh, is it? Okay. It has a, it has a, think a that pleasant finish, through. but not as long. It's not a, hmm. uh, there's very little heat with this. What's the ABV this on this? This is very nice. 40. Okay. I should explain. They describe it as American oak. It could very well have some sherry to it. Uh, have been American oak X sherry barrels, but they don't okay. say X bourbon. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they're not saying first fill X bourbon or anything like that. So when they describe it as American oak, yeah, there, probably, there might be some sherry casks in there okay. that were originally done with American oak. You never know. It's an easy drinker, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, let's see how it holds up with uh, some water. As I'm almost drinking it down. That's how easy it is. Yeah. Well, I'm almost yeah. done. I think Can I get a I little bit of there's, there's, there's always more, guys. So. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I think I thank might you. be a You're a fine here. host. <laughs> I'm not yeah, entirely just, sure just, that just was an accident by uh, either one of you, you there. <laughs> what? Have... Sucking it down? It, goes down it may have been something just, you did you know, It almost there. reminds me of like some of the American cinema malts. Yeah. A little bit like the younger ones. Yeah. And for a for a 15, this is unbelievably smooth it's just mm-hmm. you know cause you've aged it a long time and it, it's it's really as you said easy drinking really, yeah really can you really pass nice. me the uh, straw thingy really nice. the dropper it's all about the science okay. hey Sir? we work with precision around yes, here yes we do yes we do one drop at a time I guess you know the nose changed a little bit yeah, seems think, a lot more fruity. Yeah, I think a uh, I think it, it, a little more complexity came to the forefront when you mm-hmm. added some water. It cut through whatever the maybe the barrel whatever, finishing was. Yeah, and, whatever and, was holding and, it back. And, yeah, kind of blossom. A lot more sugars, more fruit. Because you almost get like a little, a little maybe like a little brown sugar. Yeah, yeah. Vanilla's coming through a little more with the water. I didn't yeah. get that before. Okay, Sam. My nose is numb. I think Sam's just going to finish his and ask for more again. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting a to pattern. See, yeah, I'm starting to see a trend. Don't let my <laughs> mo out, really. I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, and again, you said th- this is what they use as part of the blend. Yeah, it's one of the whiskeys so that goes into their blend. Don't yeah. bottle this by itself. No, and, it's and very yet, rare to find it. And, and yet, if you did bottle it, I think I'd buy it. Yeah, well, they, they yes, bottled. This is the first time awfully, they've released that's, it. That's awfully good. Yeah. The only other time I've seen this bottled officially by Chivas Brothers was a uh, version that they sell at the distilleries in Scotland that I think was a, a, a much young, I think maybe a 12-year-old right. version of it that they've sold as part of their distillery series that they sell only at the gift shops at uh, the Glenlivet and Strath Isla, places like that. Sure. Do they disclose when they make it how much of each they get, goes into it? In the blend, or is it just you know this is kind of like that? We don't tell you a the component secret sauce. or a percentage. Yeah, yeah they're going to tell us that. No, no man, I just was no, curious no. as to what the lead was because this is awfully good. Yeah, I mean, I, I could. I see think that this is one this of the be, dominant. Ones. I could see this being one of the backbones of what they make. I think this is one of the good. backbones. Yeah. It depends on which expression that makes, because right. that makes sense. Different Valentine's expressions have mm-hmm. different backbone whiskeys, just like 
different Johnny Walkers have sure. different okay. back. Sure. Every different blend has a, a, a backbone to it that's mm-hmm. slightly different to throw things off mm-hmm. and to make it unique. So well, with a little bit of water, it's even an easier drinker, if that makes sense. You know, I think it got better with the water. It definitely yeah. did. Yeah. It kind of very, rounded very out nice. the flavors a little bit. Yeah. Because now you get a little more of the sugars, a little more like, you know, vanilla, a little caramel. And, and if it's possible, by watering it down, it seemed to thicken it. It seems to have a little more hmm. complexity, a little more flavor to is it. Is it like, you know, like it... when the water hits the road that hasn't rained after a while? <laughs> maybe that's what it is. Oil it, brought the the oil, <laughs> it brought the oils to the top, maybe. I don't know. Could as very a, well be. As an auto, auto racing person, you can yeah. get that analogy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead. explain that analogy to me on the way home. I'm really not sure what that's about. Yeah, you don't like cars. <laughs> You're an American. Oh, okay, no, when you drive on the road and it rains and the oil comes up off the road and it makes it slick, that's why you slip and that's why you drive off the road when you're or you hydroplane a little bit. It's easier to hydroplane. Ask and go Aaron what it's like to drive in LA after it rains. After it rains. It's, like, it's like driving on black ice. You skim the roads. Like driving in Atlanta with one inch of snow on the road. <laughs> that is nice. I like that. I don't think I've ever had Valentine's though. I'm not sure if I have. If I have, it was a long time ago. Yeah. I can see this being a backbone to a blend like that because it's just solid. Mm-hmm. There's no nothing I don't there's no detractors to it. Okay, that's nice. it. Let's go ahead and put the scores down. And we'll move on to our third and final whiskey. This is something of an outlier. It's the uh, Highland Park full volume. That is bottled at 47.2% ABV, and I picked it because it's a, uh, a 1989 vintage. It's essentially 18 years old at bottling, okay. but it is not quite the same mix of casks that would go into the regular Highland Park 18. Now, the vintage means the year it was distilled. It was all distilled in 89. Okay. Doesn't mean that's where it went into the barrel. Well, it probably went into the barrel. That's when it went into the barrel. It was okay. distilled and went into the barrel in 1989. Mm-hmm. They bottled it this year, so it's 18 years old. But it's not an official. They don't want to call it an 18-year-old because they don't want to confuse it with the Highland ah, Park 18. gotcha. Okay. Wait, 89 or 99? 99. 99. No, 89. No. So that would be 27 years. I'm sorry, 99. 99. Okay. 99. 99. 99. Okay. I need to stop drinking before we do these <laughs> that's things. That's why he's oh, doing a okay. podcast. Sorry. That makes it more fun. <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, it's it, you're Is there right. Somebody in the room that does finances. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yes, she's upstairs. <laughs> it's uh 99. I'm sorry. 99 bottled 2017. So it is 18 okay. years old. Just had a minor brain fart there, okay. but uh, right. thank you for catching we, me on that. I'm familiar with that. So feeling. it's 18 years old, but they don't want to call it an 18 because they don't want to confuse everybody with the regular okay, Highland Park 18. Okay. When does this come out? It's out. Oh, it's out. It's okay. been out. Yeah. Okay. It's been out for a couple of months now, and uh, it is a, as I said, there's some sherry casks in there. There's a little bit of peat, a little bit of everything in there. Okay. So let's. Uh, Get your noses in there and mm. see what it uh, see what it does. Let's take a trip to Orkney. I figure you guys have all done the Highland Park 18 trip at one mm-hmm. point or another. Yes, so. indeed. So they would more or less, you know, go through the barrels, take a dip of them all, and decide this one doesn't maybe fit the 18 profile, but it's still awfully good. Yeah. Put it up by something like that. Yeah. Okay. What's the okay. ABV on this one? This is 47.2. Okay, so this is a little. Up. This we is the highest of the 43 strength. to 40. Now we're going back up again. Yeah. Okay. This is the stuff you like. Yes, I like high test. <laughs> yeah, and you certainly get that on the nose. You get a lot more of the uh, the, 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 the astringent. Comes yes, the, the open was forty three. Ninety four octane the, in the car. Ninety four octane in me. <laughs> maybe, maybe the uh, maybe the heat comes through a little bit on the on the nose as well because you know, you've increased the ABV enough. Yeah. Is this going to be a slow reveal of the story? I'm sorry, Sam. We couldn't hear you there. You were a little far from the mic. I said it was a ZZ Top concert that took my nose out. But were you a sharp-dressed man? That's the question. (laughs) (laughs) Abso-freaking-lutely. Again, I'm getting like like a green apple or a pear to start off. Okay. Maybe a little, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of smoke. It's not as smoky as an Isla, but it, it's a very, very gentle smoke. It's like maybe a tiny bit of peat. 
Right. The peat on Orkney is obviously different composition than that on Isla. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have as much. Uh, I, I want to make sure because somebody will catch me on this one and call me out on it if I get it wrong. But it doesn't. It has more trees. Or there's not as much. There's no trees on. Isla, there's no right? trees on Isla, or right. at least in the peat box. But there are some on Orkney. Okay. So you get a little bit more tree content up there. Uh-huh. You get different different grass, different gorse, different heather, different plant combinations that create the peat on Orkney. Okay. So it's less medicinal. And I'm getting a little bit of the the heather, maybe a little bit of salt with this. You know, yeah, it's, definitely it's, the it's salt. It's a little bit different than a typical Isla. I'm hardly getting peat. any of yeah. the uh, typical peat yeah. that I would get off of Highland Park. Yeah. And I like Highland Park. But and I like this, too. Yeah, the nose is very nice. What are you getting, Angelo? Nose-wise or taste-wise? Nose-wise. Oh. Well, can I get a, get a little, little brininess also? Definitely the heather. Bit, there's a little bit of sugar, not a lot. There's just a little bit of sweetness. Um, maybe a little tobacco. Maybe like a little pipe tobacco or a little leather. Okay. Go ahead and uh, taste it. Tell me what you think. Yeah, I jumped into the taste already. Mm. Sorry. Okay. Mm. I rushed ahead. And uh, and your your nose is right with my palate. I'm getting a lot of <coughs> pipe Sorry. tobacco. And, and maybe some leather and uh, and the brine you certainly get the brine uh, for forty seven there isn't that much heat to it it's, no, it's a very pleasant, surprising it's a very pleasant heat the finish isn't as hot as maybe you'd expect it to be mm. but it, it's very very nice it's there's, just, there's a little bit of oiliness to it I get a little bit of that it's like peppery but there's also like a medicinal note to it maybe like a little licorice or eucalyptus there's a little bit of sweetness there's also a little bit of peat it's it's really nice I like this this is very different from the other two. Very, very different. And right. different. It's also easy drinking, and, and, but it's just a completely different flavor. And very different from the, the uh, Highland Park 18. This is, yeah. again, a, a totally different expression. It's very nice. Mm. I can certainly see why you don't put this aside. You decide you want to roll this out as something on its own. Right. This has a little more heat than the Highland Park 18. Because the 18, I like the 18, but I always find it very almost like you kind of have to let it open up because it's really, really subtle. This has a little bit right. more. And I like a little bit of a you know bite in my whiskey. So this, this has it. Not yeah. again, not off putting, but when I'm sipping it, it even took a you know, a minute or two after I had my first sip for the heat to really hit me at the end. Mm-hmm. I like it. That's one of the things I like about scotch when I was even when I was thirteen <laughs> having my first scotch. It's like I like the way it rolled down and just warmed me and the boom. This is, this is nice. I like Very this. tasty. I inadvertently drank it all. May I have some more, sir? <laughs> yes, of course, because now gonna, it's time to put the water I'm in. You need to put some water into something. Oh, Sam, you're going to need I some think, more, too. I, Mike, I think we must be from the same village in Ireland. That was. I mean, this would be almost like, a, like a, a stepping stone, maybe from here. You go to, you know, you go to Talisker, and then you move on to something else, maybe like a Kalila, and you just kind of keep going from there. Yep. It's the gateway to Isla. <laughs> The, um, no, don't give it to him. Don't give it to him. <laughs> You're just mean. Didn't you see my Facebook thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why I'm on the naughty list? He annoys people on purpose. <laughs> I said it's my superpower. <laughs> Mine is I make whiskey disappear, but yeah. I'm pretty sure neither one of those. I don't think so. I've, I've seen, <laughs> no, you're I've seen the appear. Bat Cave. You don't make it disappear. You're making it appear right now in my glass. Thank yes. you very much. Amen, brother. With a little bit of water, I think, on the nose, um, you lose a little of the medicinal quality to it. Okay. And a, lot, a little of the brine. Maybe a little more of the sugars. Open yes, up. I was just going to say you more little, sugars, yeah, definitely. More sugars come yeah. through. Kind of like the powdered sugar on a donut? Well, McMillan? I get the, the iced animal crackers. Oh, okay. That's what I was, I was <laughs> Ooh, getting. I just want donuts. Candied ice flavored. That's, that's always nice. Uh, I could see the powdered sugar on a donut. Yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. I know we yeah. want donuts, right? Yeah. yeah. We need some donuts. A nice McMillan donut with the with the white cream. Isn't is yeah. isn't, for? isn't Krispy Kreme right up the road? They're yeah, but they're closed donuts. now. Oh, the light's not on. They're not real donuts. Uh, they, I work. know that's blasphemous, but they're not real donuts. Don't be dissing the Krispy Kremes. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. 
My kids like the Krispy Kreme. Spears is now persona the non grata. Light. I, I didn't like say so. that. <laughs> Just like there's a different whiskey for everybody, there's a different donut out there for everybody. They, they are pretty good. I have to say L&M Bakery in Riverside. Oh, it's my go-to. With with, uh, with water, I think this pulls in some of the flavors. It's, it seems more robust with a little bit of water. Mm-hmm. Flavor wise, flavor wise, it feels like there's a little bit more to it. There's a little bit more in the in the um, in the finish, a little more heat in the finish. Again, I think the oiliness comes up yeah. again. Yeah. There's a little bit more of that, a little more texture. Yeah. How does that even happen? What? More water makes it more viscous. Well, I guess it, it releases it. I, I mean, yeah, it breaks up the chemical bonds. Yeah, break the bonds. It breaks the bonds, it breaks the bonds of the just molecules in the whiskey, and it just, just seems counterintuitive to me that it would do that. Well. But it's, I'm not a chemist. <laughs> neither am I. I can't. Well, I can't it's, give you a good explanation. It just does. Yeah, it just it, is. It's been in the barrel for so long that the water is evaporated out of it. And yeah. Then you put the water yeah. back into it. Yeah. It brings it back to the the. It's front, dehydrated. I guess. Yeah. Exactly. We oh, brought it back poor to life. baby. <laughs> not quite freeze dried, or chill filtered. Don't give anybody any ideas. Freeze dried whiskey is the next big yeah. thing. Whiskey jerky. <laughs> I think I'd like that. That. Hmm. Jerky <laughs> with whiskey seasoning, genius. <laughs> Smoked, put that in a smoker. Combine and, my ooh, favorite things: ooh. meat and we whiskey. We must be onto something. Ooh, water, go, water goes nice with this. Yeah, yeah it really is. There's nice. a little more vanilla. A little bit of vanilla comes through. Yeah, a little bit of caramel. A little, little saltiness. When I saw this come out, when I saw you know on social media the different posts regarding it, I will admit I was curious. And now that I'm tasting it, I'm like, I like this. I'm gonna have to find some. Do you know the price point on this? Uh, Is it like a 90? No, some, actually, it's probably a little over no, 100 now. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. I, w- I don't think it's that high. I think it's more in the... I'm just ballparking here. I will check during the break and come back to you, but I think it's in the 60 to 70 range. Oh, really? Wow, oh, that's, that's excellent. Bad. That's a bargain. That's uh, the 18 has been going for over 100. I, I could be wrong about that. I'm going to okay. check. Uh, wait a second. I'm thinking more 99. Okay. 99 bucks. That I sounds think. about right now. Yeah. So so of the 3, would that be the most expensive of the 3? Oh yeah. I would think so. I would think so. Yeah. It opens in the 70 okay. 80 range. Yeah, something and, like that. And the Glenbergy, if you found it if you free it, or something, it's it's It sells I think in the UK for about uh, 35 to 40 pounds, so ah, about okay. 60 to 70 bucks. Okay. okay. All, right. All a good fair. buy. That's good. It's funny you would say that now, right? I mean, a few years ago that would have been, "Oh my god." But you kind of adjust the prices. Yeah. Well, we get used to it after a while. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. Like the price of gas. You just, yeah, it's you what they're charging. It. you got to pay it. Otherwise, you suffer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is very good, though. I like this. I do like it. I will admit also, I do like higher ABV scotches, mm-hmm. whiskeys. I just like that kick. So you don't knock and ping when it's, when it's a low octane. Like <laughs> I feel bad for our brothers in the UK where so much stuff is at 40%. Oh, poor babies. Because mm. some of the expressions, I've had both at, uh, uh, you know, 40% or 43%, like the Balvany Doublewood 12. That 3% makes a big difference. It does. Yeah, I'm, I'm with It Sam. does. I, I think it does. Yeah. I it certainly does. would rather have more than less. Yeah. I agree. You can always add more water, but you can't add more. <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't yeah. add more. And it's funny because I when I first whiskey. started drinking scotch, I always thought, you know, well, you know, they know what they're doing. They know where where it should be perfect to drink as it is. But then as you start moving up, you know, you start moving up the ladder. It's it's kind of like you get used to the higher strength and you get used to the bigger flavors and you know, you kind of well, and, like and you move from blend to single cask and then to cask strength and then right. yep. Yeah. You call an Uber because you can't drive home anymore because <laughs> you've we're made right. too many moves. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did consider taking a lift over here tonight. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and write down the scores for the Highland Park full volume. And we will tally things up and come right back with a winner. You're listening to the Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel. Each month we pick a whiskey club to honor as our Club of the Month. And this month, we're honoring the Pittsburgh Whiskey Friends. The club has about 140 members and has regular club tastings, along with a vibrant online presence. And I like their basic rule. Please be respectful of one another. We are all friends here, 
There's no need or room for anyone to bully, trash talk, or belittle anyone in this group. Thanks to Scott and Alex for nominating the Pittsburgh Whiskey Friends, and we'll be sending them two dozen whiskey cast Glen Cairn glasses to use at their club tastings. Now, if you have a whiskey club, let us know about your group. We'll be glad to add a link to your website, Twitter feed, or Facebook page on our Whiskey Clubs page at whiskeycast.com. All you have to do is email us. The address is comments at whiskeycast.com. And you just might win two dozen Whiskey Cast Glen Cairns to use at your club meetings. That address again is comments at whiskeycast.com. And thanks to Glen Cairn Crystal for helping us honor the Whiskey Club of the Month. Welcome back to the Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel. We have uh, tallied up the scores and uh, actually it was fairly close. In third place, the Oban 14-year-old with an average of 3.5. The uh, Glenbergy 15-year-old from the uh, Ballantines Single Malt Collection. Fours essentially across the board. And the winner was the Highland Park Full Volume with a 4.16. And got the highest scores from uh, Angelo with a 4.5. What did you like about that one? I, I just, you know, I like just the way, it, the whole thing, the texture of it, the flavor, the, you know, the finish, the aftertaste, it just had a, it had a nice balance of everything going on. A little salt, a little smoke, a little sweetness. It was a good whiskey. Mike, you scored the Oban a three. That was the lowest score of the night. Uh, what prompted you to score the score to three? I think it's because it was the first whiskey. I think that's why. So okay. you went like, I think that's yeah. Olympic rules. I think that's why, exactly. You start yeah. first low, person can you said, that's kind of how I, what I, I did. I, I went with the Russian judge scoring, so <laughs> I just marked it down. Um, I, I thought the, the other two had a little more going for it. I, I just enjoyed them a little bit more. Sam, your scores were fairly tight, 3.5 for the yep. open, fours for the other two. What stood out for you? The Highland Park clearly stood out as the whiskey I just enjoyed most. I won't say best because that's a you know subjective word, but I enjoyed it the most tonight. The Oban I've had before, and I enjoyed that. And the Glenbergie I have not. And I enjoyed that. They were different. They were different 3.5s, but I thought they both deserved that. And the Highland Park, I'm pretty sure I gave that a 4. And it was a, it was a standout. It was very very good. Maybe it's just because I'm a lush and I like the higher ABV, but I liked it. <laughs> well, speaking of higher ABV, you will notice that during the break I brought up an extra glass. Indeed. And higher ABV, I think uh, oh. the Glen Farkless 105, oh. since it's the holidays, I figured we would pour oh. an extra oh. dram. <laughs> is that a liter bottle? Yes, it is. It's a liter duty-free bottle that I brought back go. from Taiwan. Mike, That's I believe this is your empty glass certainly angelo i think that's me right that's you right there nope i brought this back from taiwan and you do not want to know what i paid for it (laughs) is that too low or too high 41 dollars wow that's a bargain wow see that's a celebration oh yeah no it's 43 dollars i'm sorry (laughs) <laughs> and speaking of prices, I did check during the break, and the full volume's recommended retail price is $100. Okay. 99 so you were right really there. So in line with everything else. Yeah. So I thought we would enjoy this one, and uh, cheers, guys. Thank you for cheers. doing this. Cheers. and uh, Thank you. Thanks for, thank you for the invite. Anytime. And tell me what you think of this Any- one, too. We're not going to put scores to this one, but I figured we'd just have fun and do one bonus dram for the holidays. Oh, it smells hot. And good. It is a sixty yeah, percent ABV, smells, by the way. It smells sweet, man. This oh. is when they say one hundred five. Is that the proof? That's the one hundred five British proof. It's sixty oh, okay. percent ABV. Oh, okay. It smells sweet. It smells hot, and that has nothing little... to do with sugar. <laughs> yeah, this one burns the nose a little bit. Oh, a little bit of burn gosh. in the nostrils. Which I'm not complaining. Just just stating a fact. I think that's one of the things that I I like ab- uh, about higher ABV whiskeys and for whatever reason I did allude to an accident at a concert uh, a ZZ Top concert with my nose where it did get broken so it doesn't work that well Um, but the higher ABV whiskeys I definitely can just smell better there's there's more to smell for me the other you know lower ABV stuff it's like (sighs) sorry about that Mark you can edit that out if you want but it's like I'm not getting a whole lot nah (laughs) What's the age statement on this bottle? There is no age statement on yeah. it. So what do you what do you think? 
Um, I'm seven, thinking maybe five to eight. Five to eight. Okay. I, and Cause that's just a ballpark? Because I, I, I dove right in, and, and uh, it's awfully smooth for the high ABV. Well, I suspect there's some older casks yeah. in there, but I suspect most of it's five to eight, and yeah. then they put some older yeah. whiskeys in to uh, soften it a little bit. It, it's awfully smooth. It has one of those green smells yeah. on it that, in my experience, associates with some younger whiskeys, so five to eight wouldn't surprise me. This is all sherry cask? Is that what Glenn Farkless is known for? That's all they, they ever do. Up? I don't think I've ever had a Glenn Farkless bourbon cask okay. yet. Okay, that's what I thought. I haven't had them in a long time, so. Boy, that's good. Yeah, you get you get a lot of, you know, you get some dried fruit coming through, and you get, like, dark sugars and yeah. kind of a whiny note on the nose. Get kind of the stone fruits yeah. coming in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Never had a bad Glenn Farkless no, Nice yet. mix, yeah. Nice. Well, gentlemen, happy holidays, and thank you for doing this. I thank hope you. you had as much fun as I did. Nice. We Absolutely. did. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Slancha. Slancha. Once again, our panelists this month, Mike Farley, Sam Spears, and Angelo Veneziano. Now, if you'd like to be on the panel for an upcoming episode of the Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel, it's easy. Just send us an email. The address is comments at whiskeycast.com. And please put tasting panel in the subject line. Tell us where you live and if you have Skype on your computer. That's how we bring panelists together for our virtual tasting sessions. But if I'm going to be traveling to your area in the near future, we might just bring some folks together for an in-person tasting. That email address again, comments at whiskeycast.com. That's also where you can share your comments about the show and I hope you'll also share the Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel with your friends, too. You can help other whiskey lovers discover the show by leaving reviews or ratings at iTunes or wherever you download your podcasts from. And don't forget to join us each week for Whiskey Cast to get the latest whiskey news and much more cask strength conversation. The Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel is brought to you by the Whiskey Exchange offering worldwide delivery of more than 9,000 whiskeys and spirits at thewhiskeyexchange.com. The Whiskey Cast Tasting Panel is a production of Cask Strength Media, copyright 2017. I'm Mark Gillespie, reminding you that when you drink, please drink responsibly. Thanks for listening.